Anne-Lise Marie Frank born on June 12, 1929 and died sometime in 1945, was a German-Dutch diarist of Jewish heritage. One of the most discussed Jewish victims of the Holocaust, she gained fame posthumously with the 1947 publication of The Diary of a Young Girl, originally het actor Hughes in Dutch, English, The Secret Annex, in which she documents her life in hiding from 1942 to 1944, during the German occupation of the Netherlands in World War II, it is one of the world's best-known books and has been the basis for several plays and films. Born in Frankfurt, Germany, she lived most of her life in or near Amsterdam, Netherlands, having moved there in 1934 with her family at the age of four and a half when Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party gained control over Germany. Born a German national, she lost her citizenship in 1941 and thus became stateless. By May 1940, the Franks were trapped in Amsterdam by the German occupation of the Netherlands. As persecutions of the Jewish population increased in July 1942, they went into hiding in some concealed rooms behind a bookcase in the building where Anne's father, Otto Frank, worked. From then until the family's arrest by the Gestapo in August 1944, Anne kept a diary she had received as a birthday present, and wrote in it regularly. Following their arrest, the Franks were transported to concentration camps. On November 1, 1944, Anne and her sister, Margot, were transferred from Auschwitz to Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, where they died, probably of typhus, a few months later. They were originally estimated by the Red Cross to have died in March, with Dutch authorities setting March 31 as their official date of death. In 1986 the historians David Barna and Gerald van der Stroom wrote in the diary of Anne Frank, the critical edition that they probably died at the end of February or beginning of March 1945, basing this estimate on the written statement of eyewitness Lean Brillis Leeper in November 1945. Research by the Anne Frank House in 2015 suggests that they died in February. Otto, the only survivor of the Frank family, returned to Amsterdam after the war to find that Anne's diary had been saved by his secretary, Meep Gies. He decided to fulfill Anne's greatest wish to become a writer and publish her diary in 1947. It was translated from its original Dutch version and first published in English in 1952 as The Diary of a Young Girl, and has since been translated into over 70 languages. On September 3, 1944, the group was deported on what would be the last transport from Westerbork to the Auschwitz concentration camp and arrived after a three-day journey. On the same train was Bloem Evers Emden, an Amsterdam native who had befriended Margot and Anne in the Jewish Lyceum in 1941. Bloem saw Anne, Margot, and their mother regularly in Auschwitz, and was interviewed for her remembrances of the Frank women in Auschwitz in the television documentary The Last Seven Months of Anne Frank, 1988 by Dutch filmmaker Willy Lindwer and the BBC documentary Anne Frank Remembered, 1995. Upon arrival at Auschwitz, the SS forcibly split the men from the women and children, and Otto Frank was separated from his family. Those deemed able to work were admitted into the camp, and those deemed unfit for labor were immediately killed. Of the 1,019 passengers, 549 including all children younger than 15 were sent directly to the gas chambers. Anne Frank who had turned 15 three months earlier, was one of the youngest people spared from her transport. She was soon made aware that most people were gassed upon arrival and never learned that the entire group from the actor Hughes had survived this selection. She reasoned that her father, in his mid-fifties and not particularly robust, had been killed immediately after they were separated. With the other women and girls not selected for immediate death, Frank was forced to strip naked to be disinfected, had her head shaved, and was tattooed with an identifying number on her arm. By day, the women were used as slave labor and Frank was forced to haul rocks and dig rolls of sod, by night, they were crammed into overcrowded barracks. Some witnesses later testified Frank became withdrawn and tearful when she saw children being led to the gas chambers, others reported that more often she displayed strength and courage. Her gregarious and Confident nature allowed her to obtain extra bread rations for her mother, sister, and herself. Disease was rampant, before long, Frank's skin became badly infected by scabies. The Frank sisters were moved into an infirmary, which was in a state of constant darkness and infested with rats and mice. Edith Frank stopped eating, saving every morsel of food for her daughters and passing her rations to 
them through a hole she made at the bottom of the infirmary wall. In October 1944, the Frank women were scheduled to join a transport to the Liebalaber camp in Upper Silesia. Blom Evers Emden was scheduled to be on this transport, but Anne was prohibited from going because she had developed scabies, and her mother and sister opted to stay with her. Blom went on without them. On October 28, selections began for women to be relocated to Bergen-Belsen. More than 8,000 women, including Anne and Margot Frank, and Augusta Van Pels, were transported. Edith Frank was left behind and died of disease and starvation. Tents were erected at Bergen-Belsen to accommodate the influx of prisoners, and as the population rose, the death toll due to disease increased rapidly. Frank was briefly reunited with two friends, Honnelly Gosler and Nanette Blitz, who were also confined in the camp. Blitz had been moved from the Sternlager to the same section of the camp as Frank on December 5, 1944, while Golsar had been held in the Sternlager since February 1944. Both women survived the war, and later discussed the conversations they had with Frank, Blitz in person and Gosler through a barbed wire fence. Blitz described Anne as bald, emaciated, and shivering. Gosler noted Augusta Van Pels was with Anne and Margot Frank, and was caring for Margot, who was severely ill. She also recalled she did not see Margot, as she was too weak to leave her bunk, while Blitz stated she met with both of the Frank sisters. Anne told Blitz and Gosler she believed her parents were dead, and for that reason she did not wish to live any longer. Gosler later estimated their meetings had taken place in late January or early February 1945. In early 1945, a typhus epidemic spread through the camp, killing 17,000 prisoners. Other diseases, including typhoid fever, were rampant. Due to these chaotic conditions, it is not possible to determine the specific cause of Anne's death, however, there is evidence that she died from the epidemic. Gina Turgel, a survivor of Bergen-Belsen, knew Anne Frank at the camp. In 2015, Turgel told the British newspaper, The Sun, her bed was around the corner from me. She was delirious, terrible, burning up, adding that she had brought Frank water to wash. Turgel, who worked in the camp hospital, said that the typhus epidemic at the camp took a terrible toll on the inmates. The people were dying like flies, in the hundreds. Reports used to come in, 500 people who died. 300? We said, thank God, only 300. Witnesses later testified Margot fell from her bunk in her weakened state and was killed by the shock. Anne died a day after Margot. The exact dates of Margot's and Anne's deaths were not recorded. It was long thought that their deaths occurred only a few weeks before British soldiers liberated the camp on April 15, 1945, but research in 2015 indicated that they may have died as early as February. Among other evidence, witnesses recalled that the Franks displayed typhus symptoms by February 7, and Dutch health authorities reported that most untreated typhus victims died within 12 days of their first symptoms. Additionally, Honnelly Gosler stated her father, Hans Gosler, died one or two weeks after their first meeting Hans died on February 25, 1945. After the war, it was estimated that only 5,000 of the 107,000 Jews deported from the Netherlands between 1942 and 1944 survived. An estimated 30,000 Jews remained in the Netherlands, with many people aided by the Dutch underground. Approximately two-thirds of this group survived the war. Otto Frank survived his internment in Auschwitz. After the war ended, he returned to Amsterdam in June 1945 where he was sheltered by Jan and Meep Geese as he attempted to locate his family. He learned of the death of his wife, Edith, during his journey to Amsterdam, but remained hopeful that his daughters had survived. After several weeks, he discovered Margot and Anne had also died. He attempted to determine the fates of his daughter's friends and learned many had been murdered. Son Letterman, often mentioned in Anne's diary, had been gassed along with her parents, her sister, Barbara, a close friend of Margot's, had survived. Several of the Frank sisters' school friends had survived, as had the extended families of Otto and Edith Frank, as they had fled Germany during the mid-1930s. With individual family members settling in Switzerland, the United Kingdom, and the United States. March 31st, 2015 It is 70 years ago this year that Anne Frank died of typhus in Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, as one of the many victims of the camp. The exact date of her death is still unknown.
At the time, the Red Cross officially concluded that she died at some time between 1 and March 31, 1945. Let us know if you want a part 2.